All right. Very exciting. Um, so why are we here at Fun at One? Because it used to be for craftcast.com, we did the big I Love Tools. Who Write in your chat box. Who did um, always come to I Love Tools? Because you can, you can watch them all for free still on craftcast.com. And uh, I figured instead of waiting to the next I Love Tools that wouldn't have been until the last week in April, we just started doing Fun at One each week. Because you know what? I don't, I'm not anywhere near a doctor and I don't collect data, but I do know that we feel better when we're creative, when we're like-minded. It does lower our stress. So I know it's all good for us to be here, hang out with each other, chat, laugh, you know, and just, um, you know, enjoy learning something again from other artists. And thank you all you guys who are writing in. Uh, so here's how it's going to go. We have two presentations today, uh, plus I have a few little goodies to show you. And, um, uh, and just type in your questions. Uh, if sometimes um, if people don't have really strong Wi-Fi, the sound can drop out. It usually comes back on for everyone. Uh, you'll get an email tomorrow that'll say where to, um, you go to craftcast.com to purchase for free the recording. It, it won't ask, if you just get the recording, it won't ask for any credit information at all. It just, that's the way it can be in your library and uh, with the PDF. So it's just an easy way to keep it all in there. Um, uh, See, yeah, it's still, I'm just keeping the fun at one screen on right now, everyone who's asking. We'll, we'll be getting going with uh, JPEGs and videos in just a moment. Uh, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, if you ever lose a presentation, a lot of times people have just switched to another window. Uh, they've touched something on their screen. Look for always in the dock. You should see a yellow circle with like a white flower snowflake looking thing. If you hit that, it'd bring the presentation to the front again. It just got buried behind some of your windows. So remember that. Uh, and also when you watch the videos today, depending on how strong your Wi-Fi is, they look sort of animated or jumpy. When you watch the recording, they're not. Uh, and what else? Oh, okay, here. I We've extended the coupon code that we started uh, for the rest of April. So take 30% off because everyone needs to like watch things that are uplifting and positive and creative and use the code SPRING2020 and you'll get 30% off. So enjoy that. Uh, uh, what else did I want to tell you? I told you about what the videos look like. You'll get an email. Just make sure that... Um, if you haven't gotten emails from craftcast.com before, check your spam folder because it might be in there. Uh, and I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. I'm looking at my list. Yeah, oh, that was good. We're good. Any other questions before we start? It's all fun. Uh, all right. So today's, we have two Debs. We have Deb K. Hart and Deb Karash. Did I say Hello. that right, Deb? Wait, wait, wait. Karash. Karish. Yeah, I did it. I had to write it down as a little way that way, Karish. Uh, they're both <laughs> frigging insanely good artists. I'm not going to brag about them. I'm so excited they're willing to come on and show things uh, because they are redonkulous. So we're going to start with <laughs> Deb Hart, who does polymer clay magic. Uh, but I will tell you that um, if you go over to, wait, let me bounce over here for one second. In video tutorials here, she has one that she did, I don't know, a few weeks ago. I've lost track of the days and the months. I don't even know what the days are called anymore. She did some bangles. January, I think. January? That's the name of a month. Okay, we'll go with yeah. that. Um, that. And I'm just going to tell the truth. I looked at those and thought, yeah, pff, impossible. She she shows you how to do it. I am not kidding. I am lame at these things. She shows you how to do it so you can have great results. Uh, so she has that uh, class if you want to watch as well. But um, next week, all right, next week, I'm just going to show you. This is another live class that you guys can purchase. And she's going to show you the full tutorial about how to make these eggs. Uh, so you can check that out in there. Uh, today, though, she's going to show you, let's say you just want to make a polymer egg, and then you know how to color it. You could put on whatever you want polymer. Uh, so she's going to show you at least how to do the basis if you want to get that going. Plus, the other thing that Deb told me, which I this blows me away, is that I'm just going to keep going through these just so you guys can look because they're beautiful. Um, Deb, you told me that these are really hard. They don't break. 
They're they're really really strong. When I was buffing them with my rotary buffer, one of them took off across the room and, and didn't even not a dent, not a ding. No. Oh, well, let me explain. So no, there's an egg inside. There's a real egg inside that's blown out. So I thought, oh, they'd be fragile. Yeah. They need to be on a pedestal, no. but they don't. I mean, isn't no, that crazy? They're very very strong. I love that. So these are beautiful. Um, I promise you, I know, Deb, she shows you exactly how to do all the different things. You will love it. I think it's worth doing for sure. They're little treasures. Here are the colors that's going to be done in the class. That's the actual egg for class. I love that bright red that you used there. Uh, fabulous. All right. So now Deb is going to show us, though, how to um, cover them. And we all decided. Yeah, it's a little bit of a trick. It's a little yeah. trick. And you decide there's lots of tutorials on YouTube of how to blow an egg out. These are blown out eggs, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's take a look here. What's the They're trick? Just chicken eggs that have been blown out. So. And yeah. there really isn't a whole lot to it. Um, I try to show you how to do it as gently as possible so you don't crush the eggshell. Right. Right. And you put, as I remember, you put a little hole on top and a hole on the bottom and blow, basically. I know I've done it before. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I usually do a smaller hole on the top than the bottom because the smaller hole you can get away with the, the less fragile it is when you're covering things. Oh, I see. There's the small on top. Right. Okay. Right. What did you use to make your hole? I just, um, rather than trying to poke it and press on it, I just tapped it with the edge of a fork until it broke through. Mm, okay. So just sort of tap, 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 tap until the hole forms. And then I would round it out with like a toothpick. Okay. But when you try to poke on it because you're putting pressure, it, it has a tendency to want to um, crack things. All right. So and, um, probably a lot of you don't know, but I grew up on a farm and we had chickens growing up. So um, dealt with lots of eggs in my life. And we actually used to have like a candler. And so you never really know with eggs until you shine lights through them, how many like fine little cracks they are. Hmm, okay. There are in the eggs. So the gentler you can cover them, the the less likely you're going to have to actually break the shell. Now, how thick is that so polymer just, you're wrapping? About a sixteenth of an inch. Um, on my POS machine, it was like a number four setting, I think. And um, I'm just rolling it until I see the little line where it meets and Got then it. cutting it at that line so that I can match up the sheet edges. And I'm not really pushing on the egg. I am just putting it in place with my with my thumbs. Okay. And then with the steam, I'll just take a sculpting tool and gently rub the surface until it smooths it. We need a chemist to tell us. I wonder if baking, I guess you're baking plastic into the egg when you finally bake it, it makes it hard. Um, yeah, the, the plastic's what makes it hard. Yeah. Um, the egg itself is, it's just, it's basically just calcium. Um, you know, the, the strength of the egg and when the egg is dried out because um, you don't, you want to get as much moisture out of it as possible. And that's going to make it a lot more fragile because the membrane on the inside of the egg is strong because of the moisture. Mm. So when you dry out the egg to remove the moisture, it's going to make the egg even more fragile than it was to begin with. And now I am just um, pinching the clay around the egg in order to create kind of like a egg ravioli. Mm. And um, not not anything, you know, not pressing or anything like that. Just pinching the clay to get the clay all as close to the egg surface as possible without any putting any pressure on the eggshell. And then I'll trim off the extra, not really close to the egg at this point. 
just to leave about an eighth to a quarter inch around. And then pinch it together. And as I'm pinching it together, I'm trying to remove you know, air pockets just to get the clay that much closer to the shell. Mm, okay. And then just um, taking those little ridges and pushing them into the shell too. And it kind of makes those little um, bumps along the edge. And so all of this that we're doing, we're doing it without really pressing on the eggshell. We're just kind of putting the, pushing the clay kind of in place so that it forms through the eggshell without pushing on the eggshell. And then we're going to come back and trim off the little bumps once everything is all pressed against the eggshell. It's going smoother than I thought it and would. You can, oh, and you can um, do this in stages. Like do a little bit, press a little bit more, do a little bit more. And then when you get it to the point where it's almost an even surface, just come back with your tool and smooth out the seams. I'm laughing because I have a lot of eggs, but now being making all now of you our know. food. Yeah, now I'm going <laughs> to, if my husband sees me in the kitchen before cooking, blowing out eggs, though, he'll probably be worried about me a little bit. <laughs> Why waste the eggs? Well, it's definitely, you know, with everything closed and everything like that, being able to use eggs for this rather than having to go out and buy yeah. anything is definitely a bonus to what's going on in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And that tool, is that your basic, what tool is that? This is the Wow It's Awesome tool from Christy Friesen. Okay, that's a great and one. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah. know we all love her. <laughs> it, it is, it is a fab, it is an awesome tool. So it is appropriately named. And uh, so let's, Christy Friesen, we don't have that link pulled out, but type in Christy Friesen, you'll bring you to her site. And um, yeah, it's her, what was the name of it again? The wow tool or something? Wow, it's awesome. Wow, it's awesome. I think awesome. she has it abbreviated W-I-A. Wow, it's awesome. There and it go. is one of my favorite tools. Uh, so, yes, um, I agree. Wait, let's take a few. It's got a real, real nice weight. Yeah, 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 I have one too. Um, but let's take a quick question here, Monica. Okay. Uh, she just wanted to know nothing needed like liquid clay on the eggshell for the polymer to stick? No, not a thing. Uh, oh, here's a good question. I think this would melt. Victoria wants to know, can we use plastic eggs? <laughs> I have some of those too. <laughs> um, it depends on the plastic, really, because different plastics um, will, will melt. So um, it really depends on the plastic. Yeah, I would be careful with that. I'm putting in, it's Christy Friesen. I think I'm spelling it right. I'm sending it to all of you. Uh, oh, here, Maria says she has a tool called a blast fix, and it's for blowing out eggs. It has a little bellows that you can blow out the eggs into a pan for scrambled eggs. Well, there you go. See, I'm not surprised. It's always a group that knows everything. Uh, so there <laughs> you go. All those things exist, I am sure. Uh, I just want to make sure I got Robert Danzig. Hello, darling. Um, I think I have all the questions in here. All right, so let's go on to the next video. I know it looks amazingly smooth, right? People are commenting on what that looks like. Yes. And yeah, and I just can, and then I'm just um, going to show you a few little problems you can run into. One is bubbles, where you got an air pocket, and the other is if you trim off too much and it leaves a gap, because you don't want to press on the egg to push the gap together. So, um, and I'm going to show you what to do in case you come into those two situations. Okay. And with the bubble, that's pretty easy. You just take a pin and poke it. And then just work the air bubble out and press it until it sits flat against the eggshell. And with the little gap, just put a little piece into place over the gap and then just smooth it with your tool. So that way you're not pressing the clay or doing anything that might, you know, set your egg to cracking. 
And, and yes, the first one that I did, I, I manhandled it and it, it so it, it is a very um, gentle touch procedure. <laughs> okay, okay. But it seems like good production now the last work. Thing that, yeah, and the last thing you want to do is you'll see like a little divot where your hole was mm -hmm. and you'll just want to like press a little hole to let it vent. And that is just for, for the curing process because once you're done curing and the polymer clay is all cured, you don't have to worry about opening up that hole continually. You can cover it and make a completely hollow egg. Mm, okay. This is just in case you have any residual moisture because any th residual moisture will end up like bubbling the clay or cracking the egg. So you want to leave a little bit of a vent hole if you're not sure. And the other thing is if you're taking it out of the oven and want to, you know, cool it off quick, this is not the, the type of project where you want to put the egg in like a water bath when you grab it out of the oven because I know a lot of people take and put things in water baths to cool it down to temperature so that they can work on it. This is one of those projects where you want it to come out of the oven and slow cool. And, okay. And you don't want to get the moisture inside there because any moisture that you get inside the egg when you're decorating it will cause you issues. All right. Can you go over again that so you you leave this hole open while this is curing? And even if you yep. put it, okay. And then when can you cover yeah, that hole up totally? When when you decorate it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you're putting additional clay slices on it after it's cured, you can go ahead and cover it up. As long as you haven't gotten any moisture in there or put it in a water bath, because if you put it in a water bath, you're going to want to put it in the oven again to, to make sure that any of the, that you get rid of the moisture that's inside. Got it. And then this, Carol wants to know what else can you use if you don't have that tool? There's tons of stuff out there. That's Oh, the Wow It's Awesome tool, just like a rubber tip sculpting tool. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, too, I just use my finger. I just find that the tool, because of the smooth edge and the weight, works faster. Yeah. You know, in that way, I don't have to worry about pressing, manhandling it too much. <laughs> yeah. But like yeah. any rubber tip sculpting tool would work. Uh, let's see, Norchi, what, I know I didn't say your name right, I'm sorry, and I always see your name, and I love your name. Um, what would cotton eggs do, just because I don't want to blow out eggs? <laughs> I don't know. Would a, are what, those like what, the taut, tightly woven cotton eggs? Is that what you're talking about? I don't know if that would work. Um, you can always give it a try. Yeah, give um, it a try. I imagine covering most anything with polymer clay, as long as it's not something that melts, should do fine. And yeah. as long as the cotton does okay in an oven, I, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Oh, Robert Danzig suggested it's a burnishing tool. Any kind of burnishing tool is similar. Thank you, Robert. Uh, yep. And Carol just wants to know, do you always use white as your base? I used white as this because um, then when you go to like decorating it and everything like that, you can write on it with a pencil and see it really easy for um, for um, for teaching purposes. But you can cover this with scrap clay, any color clay, you know, use up your scraps on this and everything like that. Because once you get it covered with your other slices and everything, you're not going to see anything. It's just for teaching purposes, since I'm going to be writing and marking on it in order to make, you know, um, different plans for where the cane slices go in my right. other class. Um, having the white is, is better for you all to see what's going on. So that sounds good. Um, I wish you guys could all see the questions, but they, I can't do that. But who made, who had the comment about the egg blowing out uh, gadget? Could you write that in the box again? And I'm going to share it with everyone, the name of that. Uh, Carol wants to know, can you use a ping pong ball? Um, I have no clue. Uh, you can try seeing if you can put it in the oven at your clay temperature for 15 minutes and see if it works. That's the only thing that, you know, I'd recommend testing it in the oven first before covering it with clay. 
Yeah. Because that is really kind of the sticking point is if it if it holds up to the heat. And I think ping pong balls are just plastic with like a cotton inside. Oh, wait, so Robert they, just said they melt they immediately. Might. No, Robert just said they melt immediately. Someone has experience. So there, yeah. you don't have to bother trying them on. Thank you, Robert. But Robert did also say they have wooden ones at um, Michael's and stuff. So you could probably do that. Or ooh. And wooden ones work yeah. really well. Yeah. Um, Betsy said craft foam in an egg shape works. She's been covering them with success. Uh, let's see. Um, who else had another? Paper mache eggs. Thomas, that's an interesting concept. I guess you'd have to see again. Paper mache tested. eggs work really well. Okay, there you go. There you go. Good thinking. I love you guys. You're so good coming up with everything. You can also get egg shaped glass ornaments. Thank you, Michelle. All right, you guys are good. Uh, all right, so that's exciting. All right, so what we thought was, um, yeah, what was the name of that tool that someone mentioned for the uh, blowing out the tool for blowing out your eggs? It was something, something text. You remember, put that back in here. Um, let's see. Oh, Carol just wants to know, what if she wants to do half of the egg? Would I have to cover the inside with polymer clay not sure exactly what you mean there oh you mean like if you were gonna cut the egg in half and make a box um there you go that kind I of i guess idea, it Carol. depends on if you were wanting to you would probably want to line the inside of the egg if you were going to cover it with any sort of clay um but for for strength purposes you only need to cover the outside okay um, thank you, Marie. Uh, I put it in its blast fix. I sent it to everyone so you can see that's the, the little tool um, for, thank you for putting that in. There are so many questions in here. I couldn't see it again right away. So you guys, that's a lot of different great ideas you came up with. I really appreciate it of different shapes to cover. So what I said to Miss Deb H was, this is a great way for the people to then do whatever they want to do in, in polymer. This is her way of covering her eggs and her tricks and all. Uh, and then if you want to take her class of how she does these mosaic eggs, um, please sign up and make sure and use your coupon code because I think they're just frigging outstanding. So, uh, and um she really walks you through it. So make sure to come on over to crafthouse.com and uh, take a look at that uh, class and please come on. Um, all right. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Miss Deb H. Thanks, everybody. Uh, all right. Let me show um, Miss Deb K. Before we start with yours, let me just show a few things I wanted to show everyone. This came through on... Um, my email this morning. So I just want to put this in here. I'm going to drop this into the chat box. All right. So this, even though I always try to um, get my magazines online, I don't want to waste paper. I treat myself to this one. It's called Uppercase. This is the video on her site. She's sort of showing you the magazine. I'm going to bet you'll all love it is what I'm saying. I This is one of those treats when it arrives that's just spectacular. Not only is the layout beautiful, but all the artists and everything, it's just fabulous. She has all kinds of wonderful books too. I don't know her. I'm not part of this company at all. I just, I adore looking at this magazine. I thought you guys want, if you don't know about it, would enjoy knowing about it. Uh, she is doing some free ones. So you can definitely go on there and get some uh, free ones that you download uh, or do her subscription. I've bought lots of these different things. Her Encyclopedia of Inspiration, I also highly recommend. Uh, you know, pick out something that's your thing. It's like this fat book of pure inspiration. Uh, you know, it's, and we love that. I mean, come on. Uh, so if you see, like, if you're into vintage material or quilting material or ephemera, ceramics, if you have a thing, she probably has the book. They're really, really fabulous. So I recommend checking this out for sure. And I think it's great that she has this um, right here, free resources. I guess I'll, let me put this link in here too, but I'm pretty sure you can get to it once you're on your site. But uh, treat yourself. Uh, I'm sending that to all you. Because uh, then you can take a look at a bunch of these for free online. So I wanted to show you that. Okay. And then one other thing 
don't judge me. Uh, I'm freaking out with this TV show, Lego Masters. I'm going to put this in there, too. <laughs> I hear laughter. Um, so I, I just started watching it. Oh, good. Okay. I'm sending it to all of you. If you don't know that, I know I'm talking to my people here today. So, I mean, it's, it's adults playing with Lego and you could watch it with your kids. I mean, it's great for that too. It just happens to be on at 10 o'clock at night, but they make, and you can watch all of the ones that have already been on. I guess it's streaming someplace. I'm just going to tell you last week, good versus evil. They did movie sets where you had to do, uh, uh, it was sort of crazy. They got uh, their prompts from little kids and they had to build these sets that showed um, movies of like the evil versus the good. They were amazing. Super bridges. How, how strong could they make their bridge? I'm telling you, this to me is what we all need right now. So <laughs> it's on <laughs> Hulu. Too. Hulu. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Um, it's really inspiring. Who knew? And I didn't know to even bring it around to kind of the things we do, polymer clay, metal clay, uh, alcohol inks. You could make stamps to use out of the Lego pieces. So you could actually use those as texture stamps. So I'm just telling you, it's um, it's worth it's worth a little look, especially now if you're looking for stuff. So there you go. <laughs> just wanted to share all that with you guys. Uh, Betsy, you love, you love, okay. Your nine-year-old nephew loves it. I know they're so good. Um, I used to have a Lego telephone. I love that. It was I, awesome. I I, 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 I sort of know that. I, I'm having a visual when you said that. Um, mm -hmm. Code again for Donna for Craftcast. It's just spring 2020. No spaces. Uh, yeah. So we all love that kind of stuff. So there you go. Enjoy both those things. All right. Now, now this is going to be fun. Um, first of all. <laughs> Deb K or other Deb is now going to show us um, her tool. Now, first off, I just want to say I already adore when women make tools. A, B, her work is ridiculously gorgeous. Wait, I have it open. Where is it? Do I not have that open? No, ba ba ba. There's oh, there's Deb's site. Wait, let me put in Deb's as well. I got too excited talking about the Lego people, so. Um, uh, there's her tool that she's going to talk about that's on sale. So think of that. And then also cruise through all her ridiculously gorgeous pieces of jewelry. Just phenomenal. Uh, so this is what got my attention. And I asked Deb to come on. These are crazy gorgeous. I mean, these two things that we're doing today, the artist work just blow my mind. This is colored metal. Uh, I'm hoping to talk Deb into doing a class with Craftcast. I'll show you the one that maybe she's going to do for us. But look at that. I mean, these are all, Deb, is it all copper metal or it's a mixture of silver uh, and copper? It's it's argentium silver and copper. That piece that we're looking at now has um, some amethyst beads in it and a, um, a gold vermeil uh, bead and a little glass bead and then the rivets are brass that has a, you can just see the one brass rivet in the center but there's <sighs> other rivets holding it together too that's right she does all the cold construction work too which i love so this gold right here that's a bead that looks like wire wrapped around mm -hmm. it is a sort of a bead made from wire yeah mm -hmm. i yeah. mean and then, so then the pink part is the copper and and then i draw on the copper with prismacolor pencil I'm just saying if I drew on copper with crisp color pencils, it wouldn't look quite like that. So I think there's a little bit more involved, but it is freaking gorgeous. Um, I'm going to show a few more of these. Look at that. I mean, come on. So this is what argentium silver here in the middle. Yeah. And then and then the the actually the the colored part is it's actually um, a lot of my pieces that I'm doing now are made with uh, argentium and copper bimetal, which means it's one sheet of metal that is copper on one side and silver on the other. Hmm, okay. And um, I have it made special for me up in Seattle. And then, uh, so I color on the copper side, but the back side of that whole thing is silver. She, and what's this, this is black in the center. How is that black? So that is, um, I made a mold from a, a, a plant in nature. I stripped a plant back until I got to that little center part and I made a mold. And then I cast it in uh, plastic that is infused with graphite. Oh, that's exquisite. And about how many inches across is that? Mm, 
Mm, I'd say that's maybe about three inches, three and a half, something like that. I mean, there just one is stunning after the next. So, so that's the same approach with the black in the middle there. And then yeah. both greens are hand colored by you. Yep. And the silver, is that colored also with some black in it or something? No, that's just Argentium. So, well, it's got a little bit of, um, of uh, patina on the ends. So you can, um, yeah, it's, I, a little no, patina. You know what? I think on that one, no, I think that's just the shadow from, okay. the, from the photo. Okay. These are all photos I took myself, so they're not. Uh, well, you did you good, know. girl. I mean, look at that. That's like a pattern that looks right out of nature. And you yeah, did that, that by the, pencils? The, the, little, uh, the little beads and the, the little parts in the center that are kind of modeled looking, those are glass uh, beads. They're called dagger beads. And it's all oh. held together with the rivet in the center there. Blows me away. Okay, so now this one... There's a link in your handout on Deb's site. There's a video right there you can watch. And she shows, I believe it is how to make this one, which I adore. And now this is no coloring, but it's all rivets and, and black, and but there's no colored pencil, correct? Yes, yeah, it's, it's silver and copper. And then the copper is colored with uh, liver of sulfur patina and then brass brushed. And then the, in the center, there's just a little uh, a Chinese turquoise bead and a little glass bead. Gorgeous. Um, so now this though, so this is, okay, so now you guys are going to flip when you see this tool. So the tool we're going to see a video of you made this. So you're inspired by nature. You made it mm -hmm. in copper and then that's how you hand colored it. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, gorgeous. All right. So that's a video. Let me just do a quick though. Here's the tool. Love that. It looks, it's, sort of like a little piece of art just looking at the tool uh and now here is a video i mean i can't even believe this okay go ahead Talk, walk us through this deb okay so i i've already uh textured i textured the metal by rolling it through the rolling mill and then i cut it out and i've done all my filing and i've uh i'm just i'm putting some forming into the into the to the metal so i'm i'm giving it volume and um, one of the reasons that it works really well doing this on the little black block is because the block is made out of Delrin, which is a non-marring surface. It's kind of like a lot of us have like leather mallets that mm -hmm, we use mm -hmm. or nylon mallets. And I'm using a nylon mallet, a very, that hammer I use all the time and it, it's very inexpensive. I, I bought mine online for, I don't know, maybe $20. $20. Um, so um, it might even be less. So what I did was I put it into those little v shape in the block and I put that little crease down the leaf. And now what I'm doing is I'm rolling over the edges. So the block has two sides that are uh, curved. Mm. And so I'm showing you that right now. And so what I can do is I can lay it over that edge and hit it with that nylon hammer and roll that edge over. So it, it's just giving it more volume. I, I don't like to make things that are flat. I think that, um, you know, the volume is interesting. And um, I don't like, uh, doing chasing and repasse with the pitch and all that stuff. So um, this is sort of my answer to not having to deal with all that. I can still get some volume in my work. So that's, I'm, I'm just rolling those edges over. And then once I've got those rolled over, so I've got that nice crease down the middle, the edges are rolled over. Now I wanna roll the tip down a little bit. Um, so I think this is, I think I'm getting ready to do that here. Oh, no, I'm giving it a little more. So the thing with forming is that it's kind of a back and forth thing. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you hammer a little bit and then you look and you hammer and you look and you hammer and you look. So, so now I'm like just uh, making sure that that crease is still nicely in there. I might have hammered a little bit of that out. So that V block on the side is really handy. I use it all the time. I love that it, everything is in one piece because you could find all these little individual tools and be searching around oh, yeah. in your shop. Yeah. Exactly. I had all those tools, you know, in my shop. Right. But yeah, they were all different. Yeah. And, and one of the, I mean, I mainly made this tool for my students because they're always, um, you know, traveling somewhere and it's an easy tool to take with you. It comes in a little mm -hmm. bag to put all the, to put the parts in. And um, so now I'm just, um, I'm going to, I'm laying that over the edge 
and I'm just hammering the tip of it down a little bit to, to, to sort of roll it down, point that end down a little bit. So you can see I'm pushing it down. Mm -hmm. So then I've got volume. I've got all these different shapes going. I've got the crease down the middle, the edges are rolled, and then the tip is rolled down as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when I get done with that, I'm going to set it into the, um, to the round dapping portion of the tool. You can see that larger round area there. Right here. Yep. And then I'm going to I'm going to set it in there and I'm going to press the center down a little bit and it'll pop those leaves you up stop. a little bit. And then I might roll them down a little bit more. So and then, you know, there's a smaller piece that sits on top of that. That you did the same things too. OK. Yeah. And that little silver cone that's at the bottom of the right page there. there. All right here. Yeah. Right there. So that goes in. Yeah. Th that goes in like that. And what that does is you can when you get your piece all ready to rivet it together, you know, I have all those layers and oftentimes, you know, it's it's the the rivet to hold them all together is down inside of a, a dapped area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what I can do is I can set the rivet head on the end of that cone. It's got a little divot in it to keep the rivet from slipping. Oh, got it. And I can set the rivet on there and then just hammer from the back and I don't scratch up any of my surfaces so is the little and, divot like right in there like we're sort of seeing it yep. a little bit yep. oh yeah that's genius yep that's exactly where it is yeah so and the other thing about this the block too is that the, like the one i use you know doesn't look near that pretty anymore but you can it you can alter it with your jeweler saw so like i so often need a, a another like a V slot in my block that's yeah, much, yeah. much smaller. Mm -hmm. So I just take my saw and I saw a little slot in there and then I take my triangular file and I file it and I get just exactly the size that I need. Oh yeah, I've cut, I love you know, it. I've done some it. different cutouts on my block. And then on the, the back side of it is flat and so you can use it just like a steel bench block for, you know, flattening and stamping and, you know, texturing. Yeah, so I, I, I just want to apply, applaud you. You did a great job. I think that's fabulous. Also, there's a lot of people writing in. They're hoping you'll do a class with CraftCast. Just putting a little pressure on you. Uh, okay, good. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, and the, and the, other, the other thing about it was that, um, you know, when I first, just, I wor like I thought about it for probably a year before I did anything about it. And I was, uh, I was thinking about, like, what am I going to call it? You know, and how am I going to market it and all that? And then I don't know. One day, the like the idea of the little black block. When I saw the black Delrin, when I went to the machine shop where mm -hmm, I have it manufactured, mm -hmm. and I saw the black Delrin, I'm like, oh, that's sexy. It is. <laughs> I agree. I didn't want to cool. say it because I thought maybe people it's, think I've been inside too long. But that is really it's is so much nice, so much prettier than a white than white. Delrin. It is. It's fantastic. So, all right, we so better. When I, saw the black, I got so excited. I said, oh, it's going to be the little black block. It's like the little black dress. It's, you know what? It looks I, great. I it's agree. Versatile, and everybody needs one. <laughs> I agree. Now I have just have to say, you know. I, when I told my son I was calling this fun at one, he says, that sounds like porno. We're just starting to go in that area. So I'm just making <laughs> me laugh. All right. So listen, everyone. It's on sale right now. Buy it. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, come on. That's fabulous. And yes, we're going to, Deb's going to do a class with us. I know she will. How much fun. All right. So now you have a new one you haven't released yet. Do you want to just to tell us what this is going to do, though? Yeah, so it uh, it does some similar things, but it's um, it's a big dapping block. So so a lot of people have seen the big wooden square dapping block that you can get with like the two, three, four inch daps in them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there's no, but there's not a pusher that matches it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you go in there with your hammer and you hammer it into that recess, but then you've got bumps, and then you have to clean up the bumps. But this one, it's got the exact pusher to go into that. Love it. Uh, dap. And I, I wasn't able to find a cone shaped one and I like to do things with cones and mm -hmm. oftentimes when I'm making flowers I need that really sharp depression mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I put a little I put a cone in there now admittedly it's just one size cone you know there's like a million different uh, angles of cones but that's um, the cone recess that's right the there cone. okay got yep. it and that the, matches and that and got it pusher. Yep. and you can use them you know the the pushers you know you can use also to lay something on and hammer on it too so they're great they work well both ways and then this also comes with the pin in it for riveting 
So you Great. can see that little pin up there. It's a little bit different shape than the other one, but um, and it's and it's nine and a half inches long. So the back side also works as a bench block. And so like if you're texturing like a bracelet or something mm -hmm. and you need a long surface, instead of having to go to a big anvil or something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. you can you can lay it on here and, and do your texturing and Love um, it. because it's Delrin, it keeps the back side of it, you know, clean. Love um, it, love it, love it. Yeah. So I did I did make it I haven't really done a lot the launch on it yet, but I did make it live on my website today and I put it on sale. Also. Oh, good. All right. So, so there you go. You, you guys go take advantage of that. So is it here? If I refresh that page, would that come if up? If you refresh that, it should be there. Yeah. Let's just see if I do that. I always get nervous doing that kind of stuff. And there it is. Look at those, both of those things. You know what? This makes staying at home and being an artist in residence even more fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a nothing like a good tool. When I first started teaching, my students used to get mad because I didn't have any tools to sell them. I'm like, oh, well, I didn't know that was required. <laughs> well, you did good, girl. You did really good. Who knows how to rivet already out there? She is brilliant. Uh, because Mr. Dancic was on, I learned riveting from Mr. Dancic. And he has a class on Craftcast on riveting. And when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, no, I'll never be able to get that to work. But you do. And it's great fun. Um, Juliet wants to know, what is that hammer called? Isn't it just called a nylon hammer, Deb? Yeah, I think it's a it's a nylon wedge uh, forming hammer. I bet. If, I Robert, are you still on? You would know the name of that hammer. Robert taught you to dine. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, you do. You're a metal smith. Yeah, I understand, Bonnie. Um, there, I forget the name of that. But if, I think if you look at nylon hammer, it comes right up. Yeah, let's, they're let's, not expensive either, yeah, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, we love it when we don't have to spend a fortune on tools because there's plenty of times when we do. Uh, someone wanted to know, can you just explain um, while we're finishing up the how you did the black again with the mold? Just say that again, Deb. Someone wanted to know now um, what? Well, I actually I did that um, all in a class because it's a very messy process. Mm, mm, uh, mm. So I don't do that in my own studio, but um, it was pretty simple. You can you buy. Um, you can buy the the molding material. Um, I think I, I I seem to recall it might have been like a two part An material. Yeah, where you yeah. Mix it together. Yeah, yeah. And then you just press the you press the you make a little box and you put the mold material into it basically, and then you press the thing from nature into that. Yep, yep. And then when it cures, you take it out, and then you just um, you can buy this liquid plastic and mix you can mix lots of different things in it to color it we mixed in uh like this was graphite powder but mm -hmm, we mixed mm -hmm. in some like uh, spices like uh i think it was like turmeric or something made this beautiful kind of golden mm -hmm, color mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um you know so or pure pigments if you have pure pigments you can put in or paint anyway and then you just pour your plastic you put in mold release i think and then you pour in some plastic it's it's a bit of a process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i made a whole bunch in this i did took a class at penland school of craft which is near me um i took a little one week class in mold cat in molding and well casting. mold making is a whole nother thing in itself i mean yeah talk about yeah and it's fun. a process i'm not great at but but i made a whole bunch of these little flower center things and and I've been sort of using them ever since but it's a super fun process but it's messy and I actually bought some of Robert's uh, uh, concrete oh. and I was thinking about trying to do some in concrete because I still have oh. my mold so I thought that might be interesting that could be good um all right Chris said she he or she thinks it's a nylon wedge hammer that sounds right I bet you'll find it putting that much information in yeah, for sure. Let's see. Yeah, I found it. Um, there's one, Beadsmith has one. Um, it's $14.45. There you go. Um, Seattle Findings has one, but one of them has a flat head. The one I have has a pretty flat head, and uh, some of them have a rounded head, and I really like the flat one. Okay. Um, the other thing about uh, there it is, hammers right there. like that, too, mm -hmm. is is when you get them, all the edges are kind of cut off sharp. Mm -hmm. Take your file and just take off that sharp edge. On is that what you did right there? Because like it just, looks like you did there, did you? Yeah. Just yeah. Take, yeah I just yeah. Can run my file over it so that I don't have any sharp edges anywhere that are going to make a, you know, a, the little half moon shape that you get when you yep, screw yep. up and hit it with the side of the hammer. 
that's a that's a really it's just a useful little tip. <laughs> that's a very good tip. I'm just running the video again to that's watch because it was really fun to see it in action, and that really is an amazing tool. I love it. Uh, Thanks. And oh, someone wanted to know. I think you said. It was those beads. I think it was Julie. Did you say that? Yeah, Julie, the tortoise looking. You said those tortoise looking, those are glass beads and you called them something. They're called a dagger. Dig. bead. The shape is a dagger. Okay. And, and they're side drilled. Side drilled. Oh yeah, those are great. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh, great. Robert just said the concrete works perfectly. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to try it. See, all of a sudden our time at home just became like filled. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, well, I've been on, on, I, I used to do a lot of electroforming when I was in college, which was 35 years ago. Yeah. And um, I, I've, I've been uh, one of my places where I teach wants me to do an electroforming class. So I just I've been trying to work out a like a an inexpensive setup for my students and figuring out how to make it work and, you know, practicing it. It's I feel like I'm busier than I've ever been. I know. Because, well, you know, you want me to do a class. Exactly. I've got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Okay. So, and Technology you know what? Technology is not my friend, Allison. <laughs> but, but we are friends and I'll handle it. Robert Danzig knows that. He knows I can handle it I, all. No I, worries. I hope that you will. I am the total nerd that way. Don't tell anyone. I know you all just heard. Uh, all right. So Sid wants to know more about <laughs> concrete. You know what, Sid? Look on craftcast.com. Uh, look up Robert Danzig's classes. He has one in there on concrete getting you started. It's really cool. It is so much fun. Uh, and then you'll, Robert sells small, <laughs> I know when I, when we first did the class, I thought, what do I have to buy a hundred pound bag of concrete? All right, I'll do it. No, he sells it in small little containers. So you don't have to go to Home Depot and manage with all of that. Uh, so that's good. Oh, okay, Pam, this, that's a good question, Pam. All your questions are great in here. Uh, any tips for cutting metal edges smooth? Or are they And are they mostly pendants that we looked at? Um, most of my pieces are, are pin pendant pieces. So um, they, they're they both. Okay. Um, they have a bail and they have a pin finding on the back. Most of them. Um, not every single one. Um, as far as cutting your edges smooth, I mean, one of the things is if you're going to saw, you should use the right size saw blade for your saw frame. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I basically make all my work in, uh, all my brooches are made with 22 gauge copper and 22 gauge silver. Um, sometimes I use 24 gauge for earrings, but, um, I, so I use a 4.0 saw blade, okay. but I also use a shear. Um, I use this shear called an exolite, um, metal a shear. shear. Okay. So it's, like a scissor like shear. A scissors. Okay. It's like a scissors, but it, um, but the, the trick in my opinion is to get a shear that is spring loaded. Okay. So it's not so hard on your hands. And then, um, you know, make sure that it does not have a serrated edge. Make sure the edge is smooth and that it cuts a smooth edge. But there's a lot of different things. I have a pair of old garden shears that I ground the serration off because I like the handle on them and they were easy to use and I could cut real well with them. Um, it's good to have something that has a longer throat because then you don't have to stop and start all the time. When you're cutting with a shear, make sure you don't cut all the way to the end of the shear. Like don't close the shear all the way. Mm, okay. When you get to the end of the shear and you snap that into the metal, it makes like a little distortion at the end. So always stop short and just move your shear ahead if you need to. Um, but yeah, I use shears a lot. Oftentimes on something I'll cut, if I have a long straight, I'll cut that with the shear and then I'll go back and uh, do all the fine detail with my saw. So it speeds up my process a little bit. Well, I, I hate to tell you, but I'm glad to tell you, your block is sold out. People want to know if you let them know that there are. Uh -oh. Yeah. So there you go. That can't be right. Let me look. Okay. She's like, no, that can't be true. But people are getting sold out messages. Really? Maybe it's just because too many people are going at once or something. Okay. I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, Robert. Is sold out. Oh, maybe. Oh, I got it. Okay. 
All right, let me, I can fix that. Just give me one. Second. Okay, you fix, and I'm going to say something Robert said. I forgot that's such a good idea, Robert. You can put the shear in a vise. One handle is in the vise, and then you move the other handle up and down. So it's, you have the, uh, you know, you know how hard it is sometimes to squeeze a scissors close or a vise close. This way, one's in the vise, and you're just closing it. I forgot, Robert, that was a great thing you showed us. Uh, that is a great idea. Uh, let's see. We'll ask her as soon as she's she's checking right now on her website. Um, oh, the new one. The new one is sold out. Yeah, the out. new one is. Oh, it's because I didn't put any in. <laughs> yeah, we have to work together technically. I can see now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You found it on Craftcast. Okay, great. All right, great, great. I got it. You got it? Okay, okay cool. Yeah. All right, so you guys refresh your pages and go back in order. Uh, here's here's another one. question. Um, Barbara wants to know, how is the Prismacolor protected from scratching? Do you use a uh, finishing? I do. I, um, I spray it with a fixative. It's not really protected from scratching any more than you know, silver is protected from scratching or okay. enamel is protected from scratching. I mean, you can scratch it for sure. But um, I put a, I put I spray it with a fixative, and then I also put a wax coating over top of that. Like a, it's it's called Renaissance wax. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Um, so it's it's you know it won't rub off, but if you put something sharp against it, it can scratch. I mean, you need to take care of it just like you do any piece of nice jewelry. Right. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Natalie, whose last name do you want to know? Robert Dancic, maybe. D-A-N-C-I-K. I think that's the one you wanted to know. Uh, and if there's anything you think of when we're finished, just send emails to support at craftcast.com. And we'll make sure you get all the links and all of that kind of thing. I am blown away. I want to see everyone. Well, come next week. When is it? I think it's Monday is the class, Ms. Deb Hart, right, for your class? Yeah, it? it's this coming Monday. Look at Monday those at eggs. One. one Monday at one. More fun at one. Make eggs, <laughs> and then we'll be. She's gonna do this for us, and then we can make these flowers. We can't maybe get out, do all the gardening, but we can make them and wear them. How much fun! And friggin' <laughs> applause on that tool is genius. Love them both. They are. They're beautiful tools as well. Thank you, ladies. All right, here's the coupon code you're all asking for um, classes over at CraftCast. Make you sure and use it. And, you know, if you forget to use it, just send us an email at support at craftcast.com. Sometimes people forget to put it in. We'll just credit you back. Uh, Sally's always there to help um, do all of that. And uh, that was fun. I'm going to try and keep these going every Wednesday at 1 with different fun things like this because why not? We're all artists and residents now. And, uh, you know, it's like, Remember when you used to say, oh, I can't really do that. I'm going to be out then. And it's like, no, you're not going to be now. So <laughs> we're all we're all here. We're all in. So it's all good. Thank you all for coming. Um, it's just a delight. And I hope that this gave you some creative inspiration and some some energy. And Lena, we um, we don't have a date for Deb's uh, K's class yet, but we will soon. <laughs> do you hear her laughing? She's worried about the pressure. She's going to do it. Uh, thank you, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be doing it. Ma ask Mags. Mags knows. She's like, just just work with her. It's easier to just say yes and do what she says. So I think it's true. Uh, it's hard let's to see. say no to Allison. It is. Yeah. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. You're welcome, Christy. Everyone is saying thank you. Um, they're going to order the new tool. Just do it, Mag said. There you go. Just do it. Uh, you're welcome. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. And uh, you'll get an email tomorrow that'll give you, you're welcome, Nora, all the information on uh, the recording. Um, I'm going to get to work on that right now and get it all uploaded so you can download it, so you can stream it and blah, 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 blah. Just come to the site or just uh, look out for the email tomorrow with all the information. So thank you all for coming. Please wash your hands often and, and stay, enjoy your artist in residence time uh, and make pretty things. And so keep your spirits and uh, up and your stress level down is what I have to say. I send you all a big virtual hug. Thank you very much to Deb H and Deb K for being like, Freaking amazing. Thank you so much, ladies. Everyone loved Thank what you, you had to show. Thanks You're welcome. Everybody. You're yeah. welcome. I'll talk to you all soon. Everyone is sending big kisses and thank yous, just so you know. So uh, we'll, we'll all meet again. Can I just say one thing about, I, I know a lot of people here are international. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't have international shipping on my website, but if somebody is international, um, 
I can ship internationally. I, I just, it just is a bigger process. And okay. So, so email you maybe with that. Me. Yeah. 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 Um, we're good with the email. We get everyone hooked up and figured it out. So I try to figure it out. So, and you know um, what, that's all we can do. And look at how we just spent an hour together because we figured it out and learned all this new stuff. So don't mess, don't mess with crafters. I have to say so, because we're going to figure it out. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Fun at one. We'll see you again soon and just send the emails and thank you, Deb. And thank you, Deb. And I'll talk to you both again soon. Bye. Bye, care, everyone. Everybody. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.